I'm almost starting two minutes early. But there it is, a minute early. There we go. Uh, years ago, I don't know if y'all remember this. Y'all probably do. Years ago, um, on was it WPBS, the one of the first cable stations, he had everything start at 6.05 or 5.05 so that everybody was, while you're watching the commercials for the other show that just came on, you, and you're flipping channels, you'd go to his show that just started and you'd actually watch that. It was some thing. So we're just starting one minute early so everybody has to be really be really aware of things. All right. So I did say good morning. I said good morning. I said good morning. All right. A couple of announcements. <laughs> Um, no service Wednesday night. Uh, we're going. We've got one um, one video session left, just one. But we'd like for the holiday here. We're going to go ahead and not meet next Wednesday, and then the Wednesday after that, the last Wednesday of the year, we'll finish the video series that's been going on for something like eight months, um, and then we'll start new in the new year. So no service on Wednesday night. Um, do not forget, or if you're looking for the Christ's birthday offering envelopes are out on the table right here by the front door. Uh, we'll be taking that up till probably the first week of the new year. We usually go a little bit like that way. Um, the goal for this year is $1,000, and we're doing pretty good towards that. So that goes to missions. That's an offering. That's a special offering that goes to missions specifically um, to support that around the world and here domestically as well. Also, out on the the bench out there, the, the pew sitting right by the church office is the offer in envelopes. If you're looking for your offering envelopes for the next year, they're out there. They're labeled with names if you already have a number. And I think there's, there's probably one box in there that doesn't have, a, doesn't have a name on it yet. So you can grab that one for yours if you want to for your tithes and offerings throughout the year. Uh, just to help take you keep up with, with what's what and all that. Um, so there's that. Any other announcements this morning or anything else that I probably forgot? I guess if I forgot it, everybody else forgot it too. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's pray and open up our service this morning. Lord, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be in this place. We thank you for the just the blessing of the family that you've given us to spend this time with. Lord, as we come together this morning, we want you here. We invite you into this place, Lord. We want you to hear us and listen to us as we tell you how much we love you, as we sing praises to your name, as we worship you, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we want to hear from you this morning. We just ask you to be in this service, speak into our hearts, and leave this place. Let us be changed from being in your presence, Lord, and we thank you for it. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
turn to page 170. 170.
say I'm thankful for a lot of things today. There's always a lot of things to be thankful for, but I'm thankful for real Christmas carols. And I say that because I love the song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. It's one of those, you've got to sing all four verses because there's, there's, there's something to it. But that third verse, and in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I think we've all felt that way or something similar to that at some point. But the reminder of the song is God is still here. He's still in control. He's still in charge. He's still on his throne. He still loves us more than anything. And that is something to celebrate. I just love the, I love that. <laughs> um, the, the Christmas season is wonderful and, and, and there's a lot of great things to it. But I can tell you, learning, I learned as from the perspective of a parent that it is a stressful, stressful season. So um, the reminder of, of that, that, that sometimes you just go, oh, man, I just love it. I love it. I'm also thankful I got to spend a lot of time um, with Gowana on, on Friday, and we had a great time together, and, and I, I didn't get in trouble, and I, I behaved the whole time, and it was good. Um, but we had a great day together, and I just thank God for that. I thank every great day that we can have together, I, I thank God for so. Tell me something good that's happened to you. What do you have to thank and praise God for today? I praise God for that too. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that's great though. That's good. That's good. Yep, Joyce is sick. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that at prayer time, but yeah, we'll be praying for Joyce. She's not feeling well today. So. All right, so let's sing a little bit more. The birthday of the king. think about prayer requests today and, and burdens and needs. Um, Joyce is sick. She's got the flu. Um, she's not feeling well. We'll be able to pray for her to, to feel better. Um, Caitlin is traveling today, but not here yet. She's coming. Um, but we're traveling on the road to Alabama today to see the grandparents and such. So um, y'all be praying for her as she goes down the road, that she is safe. Judy is traveling today. 
Uh, but she's coming from a long way, too. She's about the same area of the country, really. <laughs> okay. And to Sarah as well. Right. What else do we have today? Oh, wow. Two star. Way to go, David. <laughs> that is neat. And how many of y'all remember him running around here? <laughs> that is neat. Well, praise God for that, and also prayer. So that's just more responsibility <laughs> that comes along with that. Prayers for them, as it says the recovery time, but also in the lead up to it, that's January 16th, she'll be having this knee surgery, right? That's just what we need. Remember those 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 troops that are deployed, and remember, yeah, remember all the families that are missing them too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have any in your heart this morning you want to lift up? Let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord, I do thank you that you're always there. I guess the better way to put it is that you're still there. You're still on your throne. You're still in charge. And you still have a great love for us. And you still want to hear from us. You still want to know our needs, even though you know them before we ever bow our heads, Lord. You want to hear from your children, and we thank you for that. Lord, this morning we have shared some needs. We think about Joyce and 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 feeling sick, Lord, and just pray for you to touch her and, and just flush that sickness out of her body that she can feel well and rested and, and ready to go again, Lord. Just heal her of that. Lord, we think about Caitlin on the road. If you just edge her around and keep her safe, Lord. We think about those that are deployed. And we, Kirk has a special place in our heart on that, but there's a bunch of others that are with him, Lord, and we just pray for each and every one of them far away from home and this time of year that is so important to family. And so much about family, Lord, and we pray for those families that are that are still at home missing them as well, Lord. Pray for Janet as, as knowing the surgery is coming up and, and going to get this knee fixed, Lord. We just pray that goes smoothly. That we just pray for your provision and and your guidance that you do bring those into their lives that they need in this time as, as the recovery goes on, Lord. Lord, we just pray for your hand to be upon them. Lord, I pray for your hand to be upon each and every person in this place today. Lord, we have but to look out and just keep our eyes open, and we can see you working all throughout this world, Lord. So I just pray for you work in a special way in each life that is in this place, that you just, you show up, that you move in such a way that none can deny that it is you. Lord, I just pray that you put us in the places that we need to be as we go throughout this world, that you give us the words that we need to to speak, that you give us the prompting to give a hug when it's needed, to shake a hand, whatever it is, Lord, that you need, to show your love to one who's just not quite seeing it. Lord, we pray for all those who just are struggling in this time of year, just struggling in general in life right now. Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon them, just to show them how real and how wonderful that you are. And Lord, we just pray for you in this place. We pray for you in this church. We pray you to lead and guide us in your will and your way as we move forward. We thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, we love you. We praise you for all the things that you, you've done, all the things you're doing right now, Lord, and we praise you for all that you will do in the future. We give your name all the and the glory and the honor forever and ever. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
We've talked about this Christmas season being prepared. We've talked about expecting a miracle or looking for a miracle. We've we talked a lot about Jesus, which we could always talk about Jesus all the time. And in this, we, what we celebrate in Christmas, I talked about a couple of weeks ago that, that people did not, there were many who didn't recognize Jesus. They didn't figure out that he was the Messiah, even though everything in the prophets pointed to it, and everything had been fulfilled. And, and Jesus, in a lot of ways, even though he didn't, always come directly out and say it. He just flat said it in a few places. And yet still they, they rejected him. Still many just didn't recognize that this was the one that they were waiting for. This was the one that they had, in a lot of ways, been working for. I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1. We're going to be in the book of Luke a lot today. Um, just different examples. Now I want you to turn to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 39 here in just a second. It's just, I know I say it a lot. The whole Bible is my favorite. We're just going to say that. There are parts of it that I like more than others. I don't really like reading them. Um, I say I think it's, Exodus has a lot of numbers towards the end. Numbers has a lot of numbers, but actually has a lot of story too. Leviticus, I can't even say the word. Leviticus can be a little little daunting to read sometimes and um my my dad and i kind of we don't argue about it but we disagree he likes the book of, of ezekiel a whole lot and, and it's not one of my favorites to read through just because i think there's too many words wheel went up the angel went up wheel went this way the angel went that way just say wherever the wheel went the angel went you ain't got to put all the stuff in there but i'm sure there was there was something to that <laughs> but this is really around the christmas time there's a lot of great stories, and this is one that really hits me well. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. I want to read this just to start off with. It says, At that time Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she, went, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Now they're cousins, they're, they're relatives, they're family. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby, John the Baptist, her baby, leapt, leapt in the womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. I love that. An unborn baby recognized the entrance of the Messiah into the world. And his mama did too. Let's not forget her. <laughs> and Elizabeth did too. And I think about Elizabeth. When we first hear about Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah, we hear that they are of the, the tribe of, of, of Aaron. They're descendants of Aaron, which means they're, they're in the priestly descent. descent, descent. Um, they both work in the temple um, as is as prescribed for their families, and they've been doing the things that they're supposed to do, and they are, it says they, are, they live righteous lives, and they are faithful to what they are called to do. They're doing the work, and they're doing the things that they're supposed to do. Yesterday, um, we did a lot in the house, and, and I... <laughs> I thought about this as I was doing it, but we were um, cleaning things up and, and moving things around. Cameron made the comment that every time somebody comes to visit, we rearrange the house. So <laughs> we were kind of arranging. We have a, a guest room, uh, one room that's just basically, uh, we know it's going to be a guest room. And I had, um, we had moved some stuff and I had moved some furniture into it, but I had not put it in a very aesthetically pleasing arrangement. Let's put it that way. That room had to be moved around a little bit because it didn't look like a room. It just looked like we had thrown a bunch of furniture in there. And I, by we, I mean me. So um, Dewana helped with that, and she directed, and she moved stuff, and, and I moved stuff, and we got that room looking like a room, and it's kind of pleasant. It's going to be nice for somebody to come visit. You know, when somebody in this time, at any time of year where somebody comes to visit, Christmas seems to be that place where people do that. 
when you're the one who's being visited and you have company coming to your house, you, you're going to clean your house, right? Um, I've gotten in trouble many a time for not giving enough warning that somebody was coming over. Because do you know what the house looks like? I mean, yeah, I know what the house looks like. It's got brick on the outside and there's white and it's got, you know, the shutters. And you know what the house looks like inside? Yeah, it looks like people live here. <laughs> Apparently, a house is not supposed to, uh, this gentleman, I, I want y'all to understand this, the house is not supposed to look like somebody actually lives there when company comes in. It's supposed to look like it's out of a magazine or something. It's supposed to be really, really good. I don't always get that. But we're cleaning the house. <laughs> Let's get back to the subject here. And I'm, I'm not always... I don't like change all that much, and I, I think, you know, if it was up to me, furniture would stay where it went till it just fell through the floor. Um, that's just kind of how I go. So rearranging furniture or moving things is not my favorite thing in the world to do. But as I'm doing this work, I am remembering the purpose for why I'm doing it. As I'm doing this work, as I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do, I am anticipating the purpose for why it's being done. The reason why that room was being made livable and being made nice and presentable and, and, and welcoming is because my daughter is coming to visit a week, in about a week. And she needs a place to sleep. That's pretty important, right? And I'm remembering that, and so there is joy in what I am doing. We need to recognize why it is that we are doing what we are doing. We need to remember, it's, 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 a, it's an old phrase, and it's one of those things that rhymes, so it sticks in your head, but Jesus is the reason for the season. We need to remember the reason why it is that we do all the things that we do. When it comes to Christmas time, I talk about being a stressful time because we've got to have this, we've got to have that, we've got to do this thing. We, there's this list of things that you need to do, and really I should have done right after Thanksgiving, but I didn't. I do have a rule. I don't like to put the tree up until after Thanksgiving because I want to celebrate Thanksgiving. But there's a list of things to do, and it can get so stressful, and you're doing all these things, but you have to remember the reason why it is that you're doing the thing. As we go through life, we need to remember the reason why it is that we're doing the things, and we need to recognize Jesus in each of those places. We need to be expecting Jesus in our lives. In Luke chapter 2, we have some that recognize Jesus. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I like the King James. It says they were sore afraid. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause you great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. That is the most important verse I want you to hear today. And this, especially from this part, when the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go. None of that makes any difference. None of that makes any sense. None of that is, is, is recordable in the word of God if they don't get up and move, if they don't recognize that something significant has happened. And, you, and to myself, I can say all the time, they just saw angels. They saw the glory of the Lord shining in the, in the, in the heavens. They saw a whole multitude, a whole choir of angels singing and praising God and telling them what has happened on this day. Of course they recognized it. How many times have you known somebody that God has just been knocking on their heart, has been knocking on their lives, has been doing miraculous things all around them, and they just don't recognize what is going on? They just don't recognize that God is trying to get their attention, that God is trying to tell them how much he loves them, that God is trying to draw them unto himself. They don't see it. They don't recognize it. Here's what's important here. These two shepherds, they were looking for it. 
This wasn't just some occurrence and happening. It was a big deal for them. That's life changing. But they were looking and working and expecting the Savior to come. They didn't know his name was Jesus yet. They wouldn't get there. But they were expecting Jesus. They were looking for Jesus so that they could recognize him when they saw him. And they said, let's go. This amazing thing just happened. Let's go see it. In Matthew chapter 1, we have the wise men. Now, we, in our nativity scene, I love this. This is Miss Mary Schumacher let us use this this year. This is hers, and it's got, you know, the traditional nativity scene with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men. I want you to understand the wise men came a little bit later. <laughs> they weren't all there at one time. They came and recognized the king a little bit later. But here's the great thing about the wise men. They were looking and they were searching for a king. They were looking and they were striving to find something special. And they were looking to recognize what it was. And it took them a while to get there. These were not men who were, who were followers of the faith. They were learned people. They were people who had studied. I'm sure they'd probably looked at the scriptures as they, as they were looking and doing all their learning. But they weren't of the, of the Jewish faith. They weren't of the Hebrew people. They were somebody from outside. And when they found Jesus, they recognized him. You go to Luke chapter 2 a little bit farther down, starting in verse 22. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to, Jer took him to Jerusalem, Jesus to Jerusalem, to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the prophets, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. This was somebody who was looking for the reason. He was looking to recognize Christ. He was doing the things that he was supposed to do. He was doing the work. But he was looking for Jesus. There are many in the time, in this, in this nativity story, in, in the various Gospels, that that's what they're doing. They're doing the things they're supposed to do. They're doing the work. I know all kinds of people, though, in this world that I would say they're good people. They're, they're loving and they're kind and they put others first, but they have no idea who Jesus is. And they've missed it. We, we kind of paint the Pharisees in the Bible as villains in a lot of times. And I, I don't think they were all villains. Nicodemus came to the Lord and he, was, he came to Jesus at night. Now, that was, he didn't want anybody to see him, but he came because he was curious and his life was changed and his mind was changed. I'm not going to say that all of them were bad. They observed the law. They did what they could to live a righteous life. And in their own way, they tried to get other people to live that life as well. They wanted people to live the right way. Yet they didn't recognize Jesus, so they lost the reason. Do we need a clean house in our lives? The psalmist said, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Examine me. Search me and try me. If there's anything in me that needs to be taken care of, and I'm paraphrasing the psalms, I understand that, but that's what he said. Find it and show me what it is. We need a clean house. But we need a clean house for the right reason. If we're just going through the motions, we're just going through the motions. If we're just going through the motions of Christmas and we're buying the gifts and we're doing the things but we forget why it is that we celebrate when we've missed the whole point. Do I need to clean in my house, physically, my actual house? 
Yes. I mean, goodness gracious, you imagine how much sand could build up around here on your floors if you didn't you didn't vacuum them every once in a while or sweep and all that good stuff. And you know, I wouldn't have any dishes to eat off of. I'd just have to go buy more paper plates if I just let all of them stack up in the in the sink there. And you know, if you if you don't, there's a lot of other things that I just don't think about. But I take care of the cat, so that 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 helps out a whole lot. I take the garbage out. That's pretty good. But all these things that you have to do. Why are we doing it? Well, there's a reason for it. As I rearrange my house and, and, and get these rooms, these guest rooms, ready to receive visitors, it means a whole lot more to remember who it is that's coming. The reason and the purpose in our lives. People are looking for purpose in their life all the time. What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Who am I? What am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? We hear these questions all the time. Let me tell you the purpose of life. The purpose of life is Jesus. It is. Our purpose in life is to love God and to be loved by Him. He loved us first, by the way. The Bible tells us that. He taught us to love. So our purpose is Jesus. Our purpose is to glorify Jesus. Our purpose is to know Jesus. Our purpose is to walk with Jesus. Our purpose is to recognize Jesus in that. So why are we doing the things? We're doing the things for Jesus. We're doing the things because he loved us and he taught us how to do it. We have to recognize the reason for why we're doing it. I talked last week about miracles and the things that, that Jesus can do the things that God can do in your life, the, the, the moves that he can make, the, the many great things that he can do for us. Talk about it really starts with us. It starts with each of us individually. God can perform a miracle in your life. And how many people have I known that God has just done just that and they chalk it up to coincidence or, or good luck or whatever other words you want to use. We need to recognize the hand of God in the world. But here's how we do it. We look for it. The wise men were looking for something. They were following a star. They were being led. They were looking for something. Those shepherds, even though they were in the middle of doing their work, their, their job, their mundane life, they're on a the hill, they're watching over a flock while they sleep, and they're making sure that everything is okay with that flock because that's their job. But when something happens, they had to have been looking for the Messiah because it, as soon as it happens, what do they say? Well, Let's finish this shift, boys, and then we'll go on down there. Uh-uh. They said, let's go. Let's go right now. John the Baptist hadn't even started his work yet. <laughs> he hadn't really got started in this world yet. Yet he recognized when the Savior came into his world, into his life, into his orbit there. And he leapt for joy. We need to recognize the work that God is doing in our life, and we need to look for it. God moves in ways that really can't be missed. We have to open our eyes and see it. A baby was born to a virgin. A baby was born to a God. and followed and fulfilled prophecies from hundreds of years before. Yet people didn't recognize. And I shake my head and go, how did they not recognize? Because they weren't looking for him. Those that were looking for him found him. I tell you today, look for God and you will find him. He will, he will do great things in your life. 
that he will lead you and guide you into better and better and better. does not mean that it's always going to be easy. does not mean that, that you're never going to face hard times. You are. Listen, Christmas is hard. <laughs> Getting through this season is hard. Not being around family is hard. Missing people who have gone is hard. But there is great joy in it too because God is there and God has blessed us and God has brought these people in their life and God is still in control and He is still there. So look for Him, find Him, recognize Him. Because He's the reason. Period. <laughs> I would say, just, I love that phrase. Jesus is the reason for the season, but we don't even have to have for the season. He's the reason. End of sin. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your great love for us. And I, Lord, I pray for each individual in this place that we're looking for you, that we have our eyes open, that we are straining, that we are we're putting forth effort to find you, Lord, and, and it's not much effort to find you. You're right there. You're always right there. Lord, I pray that, that, that we recognize you that we see you, that we're looking for you, that, Lord, I just pray that you're real in each and every individual's life in this place here today. And, Lord, I pray that any that doesn't know you today, that they come to the knowledge of you, that they start this relationship with you, that they are filled with your great love, recognizing your great love, that helps them love others around them and see this world in a whole different way. And Lord, I thank you for it. We praise your name. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. everybody for being here. Uh, take some time, hug your neck, shake your hand, spend some time in fellowship with each other, and have a great day. Let's pray and we'll be with you. Lord, once again, I do thank you for the opportunity to be in this place. Lord, I just ask you to be with each and every one of us as we leave this place, as we go back out into the world. Lord, keep each, keep each one safe. Help us to just to be your hands and feet, to be a reflection of you in this world, Lord. You fill us up so much with your love. Just let us give it to all those around us because it's never going to run out. And it's a free gift, Lord. Just bless and keep each one, Lord, and, and we thank you. Thank you for the time. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.